Kansas City Chiefs rookies, rehabbers, and quarterbacks are in St. Joseph, Missouri already just days before training camp officially kicks off. And this is, I suppose, what is known as rookie camp. Uh, but Pete Space Sweeney of Arrowhead Pride is on Twitter and giving updates for these practices and there are some notes that i thought were worth passing along or worth expanding upon in a video on today's practice the first one that gets to us from pete dot sweeney the chiefs continue to ramp wide receiver xavier worthy up as he was the target of all three of Patrick Mahomes' passes in the first seven-on-seven seven period, and one of the large and one of the three targets in the red zone seven-on-seven seven period, Worthy caught two of the four passes from Mahomes, including one for a touchdown. Now, this sounds egregious. All three passes that Patrick Mahomes threw in, in all of the passes he threw in 7-on-7 seven seven went to Xavier Worthy. Well, this is only rookies and rehabbers. So the rookies are the only people on the field, and if you're going to be putting emphasis on anyone in this type of setting, it makes sense that it be Xavier Worthy because it is very important for the Kansas City Chiefs that Xavier Worthy hit the ground running in week one. And if Rashi Rice is not here for these practices, if Hollywood Brown is not here for these practices, putting the emphasis on Xavier Worthy makes a lot of sense. It is exciting to see. So there was a little bit of question around his hands as he was coming out of college. These uh, these emotions, feelings, thoughts, worries, concerns were exacerbated during the rookie um, rookie camp that they had, where basically all of the footage of Xavier Worthy that showed up was Xavier Worthy being thumbs, thumbs worthy, Xavier thumbs, however you want to say it, and dropping more passes. Uh, but this is two days in a row now that we have had confirmation that in football situations, maybe not drills, maybe not with a jugs machine, but in football situations, Xavier Worthy is coming up money. So that is a very, very good sign for the Kansas City Chiefs because, look, as, as much talking as I have done about this offense and about how absolutely wild it will be if the Kansas City Chiefs have a legitimate threat who runs a 4-2-140, a legitimate threat who runs a 4-2-7-40, that's Marquise Brown, a legitimate threat who likes to stay at the line of scrimmage, catch the ball, and just put his face between somebody's numbers and Rashi Rice, and then you have Picasso sort of wheeling and dealing Travis Kelsey who makes up football on the spot. Guys, that offense is almost unstoppable, hypothetically, right? Just in the abstract, that offense is absolutely, absolutely mind-blowing. Now, oftentimes, what we end up seeing when that sort of dynamic arises in the NFL is that it's absolutely unstoppable until someone figures it out in the playoffs championship weekend. That's what you get, or, or the Super Bowl with the undefeated Patriots. But um, I don't know what Andy Reid will do with all of that speed. I've talked a little bit about how Xavier Worthy has extreme stopability. Uh, his, his start ability on the football field, obviously not in the 40-yard dash, but his start ability – leaves a little bit to be desired in my opinion it is not as elite as his stop ability so when you add that dimension in i think xavier worthy ends up becoming more of the 15 more of the 10 to 15 yard downfield guy than marquise brown will be though marquise brown has had possession type seasons in his career so it's going to be 
extremely interesting. I, I think there is still, maybe I should say it this way. I think there are still reservations among Chiefs fans about the Xavier Worthy pick because it's not as if he is this big strapping wide receiver that maybe doesn't run a 4-2-1, but he runs like a 4-4-2, right? Those guys, it's easy to look at and see, yeah, that works in the NFL. It's difficult to see Xavier Worthy working in the NFL. We don't have a whole lot of prototypes there. Not to mention, the last time we took a playmaker in the first round, it was Clyde edwards Lair, who, by the way, I will continue to defend. We had every reason to believe that was going to be a home run pick. All of the stats, all of the tape, played in the SEC, was an absolute gamer. But it so far, it hasn't worked out, right? It, it He has been a serviceable NFL running back, not the game changer you thought you were getting. But with the Xavier Worthy pick, I think there is still this hesitation around Xavier Worthy, and I think it is okay to start letting that hesitation bit by bit practice by practice, reception by reception, sort of fade away. The next note from Pete slash Sweeney's notes on Twitter is this. Two practice squad hopefuls at wide receiver, Jaron Hayek and Kyle Sheets, turned heads Thursday. Early, Hayek high-pointed a pass deep down the left sideline for a great catch. Later, Sheets made back-to-back tough touchdown catches, including one in which Kamal Haddon was close by. So first off, there's videos on both of these players on the channel and just sort of where I share my thoughts on, look, I think both of these guys have a little bit of potential here to make some noise in camp. But one of the things that's interesting upon further analysis, and this 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 was the tweet that made me realize this, guys, for all of the potential at the wide receiver position for the Kansas City Chiefs, for the Kansas City Chiefs last season, I made 40, 50, 70 videos about who was going to be the Chiefs' number one wide receiver going into the season. And every time I picked a different player, I had talked myself into believing, yeah, that's going to be the guy. That's going to be the one. It's him. There's been very few pleasant surprises. Right. Mike Dana, pleasant surprise at the defensive end position. Tershawn Wharton, pleasant surprise at the defensive tackle position. Uh, I will say, um, oh, um, I am blanking right now, and this is embarrassing. Darius Harris, nefarious Darius Harris, pleasant surprise at the linebacker position. You have pleasant surprise at Trey Smith. I. I remember when Trey Smith was drafted, I thought that guy's probably a psychopath, but I didn't know if it was going to work in the NFL. Pleasant surprise at the offensive guard position. What was the last pleasant surprise at the wide receiver position the Kansas City Chiefs had? Maybe you want to say Tyreek Hill. And that would be granted, but Tyreek Hill didn't necessarily enter the NFL as a wide receiver. There were still questions. Look, is this going to be a small running back? Is he going to be a gadget player? Is he just going to be a special teamer? And we didn't really see Tyreek Hill, the wide receiver, emerge until Patrick Mahomes was able to throw the ball 60 yards downfield in the air. These two guys, and look, Jaron Hayek, I think, has Jaron Hayek has the potential in my estimation to be a guy that is just he's he, I think he can be like a Justin Watson, right? That might not seem the highest of praise, but Justin Watson's been in the NFL for a while now. Justin Watson is a good number four, a great number five. 
to have a good number four, a great number five, without having to invest a draft pick in it is probably a good thing. Sky Moore looks like he might be a pretty good number five. Tough to spend a second round pick on that. Now, uh, as far as Kyle Sheets is concerned, we talked about him yesterday in his signing yesterday. This is a big-bodied wide receiver, 6'2", 217, or depending on where you're finding your sources, 6'4", 220, right? I think because he he participated in the Tulane Pro Day, despite not going to Tulane, where he measured in at 6'2", 217, probably those are the real numbers. Now, size-wise, that's very, very close to Justin Watson. Speed-wise... He's very, very close to Rashi Rice. If he can be somewhere in the neighborhood of Justin Watson as well, then you have legitimate receivers on this team for days. Now, I'm not going to say that... that okay, I've kind of given up a little bit on Sky Moore. Probably at the end of this season, uh, I will have completely, if he does not emerge as the wide receiver that maybe he, he could be, I think that it's time to move on from Sky Moore. Sky Moore, in my opinion, has shown that he's an NFL guy. He's not a first, you know, or a second option or the third, you know, probably not a fourth. You want to have some type of change of pace in there as your, as your fourth guy. The fifth, you know, maybe a sixth, right? So I hope to be proven wrong on Sky Moore, but that's kind of where I'm at with him. But if you can get, like I said, Justin Watson is a good number four, a great number five. If you have picked up through the ranks of UDFA, two good number four, great number five wide receivers in a single draft class. And I know this is jumping the the gun a little bit, but I think that's their potential. I think that's where these guys have the potential to be, which is for if you're getting those guys for free as UDFA, absolutely that is a positive, and it might spell the fact that maybe – uh, Brett Veach is getting a little bit better at uh, scouting the wide receivers. The next note here, defensively, I counted two pass breakups on the day, seven on seven during seven on seven. Safety Jaden Hicks against quarterback Ian Book, and safety Trey Dean against Mahomes. Second day in a row, we have had callouts for Jaden Hicks and Trey Dean. You want to talk about getting players for free? Trey Dean entered the NFL as a UDFA for the Jets, was cut, ended up in Kansas City. Trey Dean is a football guys guy. Football guy, the, the football guys that I like, the football guys that I enjoy listening to, the football guys that I trust, every one of them leading up to the draft last season, when they got on the on the topic of safeties. Every one of them mentioned Trey Dean. Maybe not in the greatest of uh, superlatives, but mentioned him. and said, look, this is a guy who can play football. This is a guy who's going to be in the NFL for a while. Some of them had a lot of superlatives for Trey Dean, thinking that he was vastly underrated. Uh, he went, I believe he was in the Senior Bowl. He, I believe it was the Senior Bowl that he played in, where he basically ran the show. And football guys who were coaches, I mean, there's a, there's a difference between coaching football and being like the football guy. Those guys, those guys love Trey Dean. So I'm excited to see what he does here. And Jaden Hicks, again, second day in a row, him being called out on uh, the tweets from Pete underscore Sweeney. Um, was often cited as being one of the steals of the draft. So it might be that the Kansas City Chiefs have upgraded at the defensive back position despite losing Legereus Sneed, which is absolutely going to be a loss. 
in losing Mike Edwards, who was that guy who was always in the right place at the right time, and upgrading at the safety spot so drastically and having a year of development from Nick Nick Jones and um, Jamari Connor that all of a sudden things are looking okay at cornerback and better at safety, and maybe the defense will take another step forward. I think this is the penultimate. Yeah, so the penultimate thing here is probably a quick hitter that is going to get me in a lot of trouble here. Beginning this weekend, the players will begin a five-day ramp-up period before pads come on. Expected right now to be Friday the 26th. Running back Lewis Reese Zamit seems ready, un- struck out, keen. Reese Zamit said, I can't wait to see the difference. I get the question all the time. Who's harder hitting, rugby or American football? We'll soon find out. It's going to be fun. I've played a contact sport since I was 12 years old. We started contact in rugby. That's bone on bone. We'll see what it's like when we come to pads. End quote. Guys, here's something I promise you. These quotes, things like this, they get around the locker room, right? The defensive players on the Kansas City Chiefs, especially after last season, are going to be prideful guys. I promise you, somebody, somebody is going to pop Lewis. Somebody is going to somebody is going to be going out of their way to give him a welcome to the NFL moment. Somebody is going we're going to hear about Lewis Reese's emit in the tent. I promise you it brings me no joy to say this. You if you, I promise you. And the final comment I have. Um, Jared Wiley, we're just going to go ahead and get this on the same page here. Jared Wiley on the red area. I would just say once you get in the red zone, everything is a lot faster, a lot more physical, and you really got to know what's going on. Not only if you're looking at the defense, but what's going on on the offense. There's going to be a lot of scramble drill and stuff like that just because everything's more condensed. So you just have to be aware of the situation at whole. I talked a little bit yesterday about Patrick Mahomes speaking about Jared Wiley and how some of the things that he was talking about led me more to believe that Jared Wiley is at least in the plans for the offense in a major way. Now, all of training camp to garner or lose those sentiments. And I don't really know the context of these red zone quotes from Jared Wiley, but Obviously, since he was drafted, we've been talking about him being a red zone threat for the Kansas City Chiefs. We've been talking about the Kansas City Chiefs get the ball at the 30. You've got Marquise Brown. You've got Xavier Worthy. You've got Kadarius Toney. And you've got McCole Hardman on the field, right? All of that speed at your own 30. But as you matriculate down the field, well, then Travis Kelsey starts to pop up a little bit closer to the end zone. Well, Jared Wiley starts to pop up. Maybe you're inside the 10. All of a sudden, a formation with 
Travis Kelsey, Jared Wiley, and Noah Gray all on the field at the same time, and Isaiah Pacheco looking real nasty in the backfield, seems to make a whole lot of sense. So I, I, I hesitate. I don't hesitate. I'm too excitable to hesitate on this, uh, but I do believe that seeing these quotes here from Jared Wiley might lead us a little bit further down the field of, pun intended, learning that Jared Wiley is going to be featured in the red zone. The early season schedule for the Kansas City Chiefs, the Ravens and the Bengals right out of the gate, on a surface level, you would think, okay, probably not then, right? You don't want to be counting on the rookies week one and week two when you're facing probably the biggest threats of the entire season for your AFC supremacy. So probably you don't want Jared Wiley trotting onto the field in the red zone week one and week two, right? Well, while he is a rookie, he's also going to be one of the new wrinkles of the offense. So maybe it does make sense to have Jared Wiley in, on the field in the red zone early in the season. That's all of the notes I have from Pete F. N. Control Alt Caps Lock Sweeney and his notes on Twitter today. If you like or appreciate what it is that I do here, hitting the like button really does help me out, as it tells YouTube to share this video with other Kansas City Chiefs fans. And if you find yourself here by chance but not designed, the Chiefs are the only thing I talk about on the channel, dropping several videos every single week. Also, by the way, guys, there is going to be a playlist on the channel for training camp. So if you miss a day or uh, want to go back, and th there will be a playlist dedicated to training camp here on the channel. 